The first thing you'll notice when you install the new Setlist Maker version 3 is that the application icon has changed. And so the green spiral is gone and it's been replaced by a kind of a teal spotlight background. And then when you launch the app, you'll see that the whole app has been redesigned. And this is the first time that Setlist Maker has a graphic design that just goes beyond the default uh, table and text styles that are in the iPhone operating system. So hopefully you'll like this new design. Now beyond the color and text styles, some parts of the app have been reorganized. For example, at the bottom of a show, you'll see that the old Choose Songs and Sequence Songs buttons have been combined into a single Songs button. When you tap that, you'll see a window kind of like the old Sequence Songs window. You can still drag and drop to rearrange the songs in your show. But you can also remove songs directly from this window, so you don't have to go back to the Choose Songs window and find the song in your long list to remove it. You can just remove it directly from here. When you want to add songs, you'll tap the Add Songs button, and that brings up a window that's similar to the old Choose Songs window. However, uh, this works a little differently. Instead of using check marks to indicate which songs are already in your show, uh, this window now shows all the songs, but the songs that are already in your show have a, a kind of a darker text. So in this case, my first song and my second song are already in the show, so they're darker. And then my third song is not in the show yet. However, I can select either the songs that are or aren't in the show already and this will allow me to add the same songs again. So I'm adding my third song, which is not there yet, and I'm also adding my first song again, even though it's already there. And so now I see my first song is in the first set and also in the second set, along with my third song, which I just added. So this is a, a popular request, the ability to add the same song to a show multiple times, and now you have it. By the way, the, song, the duplicate songs don't have to be in different sets. You could put them in the same set if you want to. When you're adding songs, you can also choose what set to add the song to initially. In previous versions, whenever you added a song, it just went to the end of your show, or the end of your last set. Um, now you have separate buttons to add songs to each individual set. So, so just a moment ago, I added some songs to the second set. Now I'm going to add a song to the first set and it appears at the bottom of my first set. And if I change my mind, I can still move that song to another set, but this is a bit of a time saver if you have a good idea of where you want the song to go as you're adding it. So you can do all the same things with uh, adding and sequencing songs that you could before with a, a few additional features. Now let's look at the uh, edit window for a song. And the windows for adding recordings and adding documents have been updated as well. In both of these windows, when you first tap the edit button, you won't see anything except for an add button. And that button brings up the document or recording picker like we had before. The reason there's an extra step here is because you can now select multiple documents and they appear in a list. And then once they're in this list, you can rearrange them. So I'm attaching multiple documents to a song right now, and then I'm setting the order in which they appear. And so now my three documents are listed here. The reason I needed to set the order in which they appear is because if I tap the document icon, I'm going to just see the first document that I attached. However, if I tap and hold the icon, I'm going to see a list of all three documents, and then I can view any of them. But in order to set the default song, I can use this list here. If you only want to attach one document to a song and then you don't have to worry about rearranging the documents, I'll just add uh, one document here. And now I have a document icon and when I tap it, that's the only document I have, so of course that one appears. So it's a bit of an extra step if all your songs just have one document to attach. Uh, but for those of you who want to attach multiple documents, this new window that sits in between the song edit window and the document picker uh, it will be very important. Recordings work the same way. I can add multiple recordings. I can rearrange them if I want. And then whichever one is first in the list is the default that plays when I tap the icon. But I can still access the other recordings by tapping and holding the icon, 
until I see the list. Yes, I would doubt. Huh? By the way, if I do select a different recording or document with this list, that will remain the default as long as I'm viewing this particular show. So if I'm uh, playing through all my recordings and skipping around, I don't have to keep selecting that recording over and over again. It'll remain selected as you see here. But if I go to a different show or reload this show, it will switch back to the first uh, item in the list. Now another new feature in the song edit window is with this other field. You're all familiar with the other field that's been here since the first version. Um, this is now not just a fixed field, but it's a custom field. And if you go to the main menu and go to settings, there's an item called custom fields. And you'll see that there's one custom field set up called other. Um, and you can actually rename that now if you like. So I'll just change it to something. And now if I edit my song, I'll see that it's labeled as something. And I can add more custom fields. So I'll do something else. I'll give it a sort order of two so that it appears after the something field. And now when I edit a song, I have my something field and my something else field. And these fields should be treated just like the other fields throughout the app. You can sort by them. There's going to be a new smart list for each of them. You can include them when you print or email a set list. And you can sync them to other devices. Now looking back at documents, uh, we now have a new item in the main menu for documents. It lists all the documents on my device. Um, documents aren't organized by database on the device because the iOS doesn't support uh, subfolders for documents. So they're just all in one folder. But uh, we are highlighting uh, the documents that are included in a song in this database. Or rather, we're dimming the uh, songs that aren't used in this database. So hopefully that will help you um, pick out the songs that are relevant for the database that you're looking at. If you tap the icon for a document, um, you can rename the document if you like, or you can delete it from your device. That's a popular request. Um, you can also see all the songs in all the databases that have this document attached. So before deleting it, you can make sure that you really want to do that and don't need, don't need to use it for any of those songs anymore. You can also indicate whether the document is portrait or landscape. Setlist Maker can't figure this out on its own. So if you want to show the documents in the perform window and have them sized correctly, you'll want to go through and check all your landscape oriented documents and set that for those documents. There are a few changes in the perform window as well. First of all, you'll see that the toolbar is moved to the bottom. So if you're looking for that done button, it's now in the bottom left. And in addition to the clock, we now have a remaining time for your show and a projected completion time. And so what Setlist Maker is doing now is looking at the durations of all your songs and your set breaks and your time between songs, uh, calculating the total time and then adding it to the current time to project when you will finish the show. And the best thing about this is that as you work through your show, if you select the songs that you're performing, uh, these numbers will be updated to show you an updated projected completion time. So this is handy if you need to end at a certain time and uh, you need to know if you should cut some songs or add some songs to get to the finish on time. And by the way, if you're numbering the songs in the perform window and checking off the songs as you perform them, then the remaining time will be calculated based on the songs that are checked off, not just based on the songs that are selected. Now, a lot of people uh, attach documents to their songs so they can view them in the perform window. But many people are only using documents to include their lyrics, just plain text. Uh, they don't need the formatting and the chord chart like I have in my document here. So Setlist Maker now has an easier way to set that up. Instead of um, putting your lyrics into a file and copying your file onto the device and attaching it to your song, we now just have a lyrics field and you can just type or paste text into the lyrics field. I have some lyrics here. Once you do that, you'll see that the word lyrics appears under the documents list. So it's as if you've created a new document called lyrics and if you want to attach regular documents you can still add them in this window and rearrange them decide which one is your default like we talked about earlier. But right now let's just leave it uh, with our lyrics. If I tap the document icon here I see my lyrics 
and if I go to the perform window I can also open my lyrics from here and just like with documents I can pinch zoom to uh, change my text size and that text size will be remembered for me if I leave and come back now another new feature is that if your lyrics or your documents are too long to show on the screen at one time we now have an auto scroll feature you can go back to settings and general settings and song selection actions and you can turn on the auto scroll documents and lyrics option now we can open the perform window and open our lyrics and nothing will happen right away because uh, if we started scrolling right away you wouldn't have a chance to sing the first part of your song so setlist maker is going to wait a little bit depending on the duration of your song to give you a chance to get through the first part of the document before it starts scrolling so here it goes and if you find that the scrolling is going a little too fast or a little too slow and you need an adjustment uh, you can just drag it to a new position and it'll continue scrolling from that spot so that's your auto scroll and that works with either lyrics that you paste in or documents that you attach as before. Now another new feature is that Setlist Maker is doing some tracking of what songs you've played in the past and you can see this in a few different places. If you edit a song and scroll all the way to the bottom you can see a list of which shows the song has been included in. There's a new smart list that let you, lets you sort all the songs by date last performed and by frequency performed so if you want to quickly look at uh, which songs are kind of overused or underused uh, you can look at these lists and then finally when you are adding songs to a show uh, you can sort not only by the standard uh, built-in fields and the new custom fields you can also sort by the date that a song was last performed or the frequency that it was performed. So as you're building a show, if you want to make sure to pick a couple songs you haven't played in a while, this is an easy way to do that. Now here's one more feature for those of you who use the database syncing between multiple devices. Some of you have mentioned that everybody in your band would rather keep their own notes rather than have those synchronized or maybe you're entering a lot of MIDI messages into your songs and you don't want everybody in the band to be sending those same MIDI messages. You just want to send them. Uh, so now there's uh, a new section in the settings under device sync for sync contents and this lets you turn it on and off various uh, fields in the song records and you can skip syncing those particular fields. So now everybody in your band can have their own color labels, their own starting pitches, etc. And as the note here indicates, uh, these values will still be saved to the server, so you can still roll back to them if you need to restore from a backup. They just won't be copied onto the other devices. Well, that should do it. A lot of work went into this update. And so if you are a longtime Setlist Maker user, I hope you'll appreciate it. Thanks for continuing to use the app. And remember, from the main uh, database list, there is a feedback button, so if you have any further ideas, just let me know.